Hello, my name is John Bidwell. I'm Ryan Martin. And we're demoing the laser presentation mouse. All right, to begin our demonstration, right now what we've got on the screen is just a picture of Ryan's laptop's desktop. Uh, the executable for our project is right there, and if you can start it up. This is the GUI for the mouse. Uh, to, the process of using the program is pretty simple. You just connect to a camera, click Calibrate, Tell the program where the corners of the screen are, starting. You get little brackets to show you where you're at. And each time you click, it moves the bracket to that location. And then when you get finished, it draws you a little box to tell you what you've seen on the screen. Good. After you've done this, you just go to the filter settings, tell it to enable the filter. The filter settings are open to adjustment for the user, so that way if you have a weird lighting condition sure. or something that we didn't expect or couldn't really test, you can adjust the filter to uh, make sure it will still work. And then you get this black screen. This black screen, we left this in there to sort of tell the user what the program was detecting. So if there was something going wrong, you have bad detection, so you could tell. Um, and once you've got here, you just hit the button K, and you can start controlling the mouse, wherever you'd like. Hey, um, this, this one right here uh, is for the turning on the red laser, and this one here is for turning on the, the green laser. OK. Uh, nothing fancy. And where are the two mouse buttons? Two mouse buttons are here, the left mouse button, the right mouse button, and you have the scroll in the center. Okay. And it's connected uh, via Bluetooth. One of the things we did specific, we added the red one in so you could still point as normal with That's the remote. That's very good, yes. But one of the advantages is that if there's a rowdy student in the class who's got a red, it doesn't detect the red on anything. I'm using a different remote here. Uh -huh. So it's got a different diode, and it's completely ignoring both uh -huh. reds. So, so it only responds to the green, and green is typically a fairly rare laser. Well, let's start off, let's go to the four corners. So we start going down to the start menu, mm -hmm. pretty close. Go up to the upper left, and you notice up above on the lamp up there, the projector actually projects part of it up there, so it's going to be almost dead on. The little arrow is going to arrive about where the laser dot is. No. With some margin of error, because the resolution of the camera is different from the resolution of the screen of the uh, screen itself. Performance. Loading up multiple applications, does, I mean, up to a point, really doesn't lo load the performance of the computer. Uh -huh. It still responds well. And as you can see, even though we've got different backgrounds coming up, it's still responding to the green laser dot. It's not paying attention to what you put up there, more to what you've got in the back uh, as the laser. Let's just start up a random video. And there we go. On the, even on the video background, it's still working. So you can pretty much do whatever you want wow. while it's still running. And it will run real time. We've got uh, Office, so you can think Word. Sure. We've got Dreamweaver, which is a pretty hefty program. And then we're running video off of YouTube. And you can do anything you can do with a regular mouse with this. You can hit every section of the screen, mm -hmm. no problem. And you can control your all of your applications. I would say that the hardest part of the project was kind of adjusting the, the coordinates uh, to where the camera is situated. We, we had so much difficulty there. Are there are many methods, but we, we feel that the method we came up with was, was fast and it's acceptable for what we're trying to do. We, we may be able to get it more accurate, but we would uh, sacrifice speed. The other thing we did include, we did see sort of an air conditioning. Could you, put a, could you put the filter back on and loosen it up a bit? Put it like at 4.4. 4. I just want to show this. If you put it on, you see it's got really bad... Pixelations and stuff. Well, it's, that's detection. It's actually detecting on the screen because there's a lot of white there. Sure. It's seeing the white, and because white has got green light in it, of course, it's also yes. seeing that. If you turn on mouse control, it gives you bad filter settings, a little warning. Uh -huh. To tell you that something's it's not, not right, work, you right. need to readjust. So if you want to... So, yeah, so if your camera gets jostled while you're presenting, and it, it, it hits something that's extremely bright, and you lose control of your mouse, it doesn't, it doesn't just sit there going crazy for, a, for the entire presentation. And also, it will stop you and let you know. And also, if you notice, it didn't move the mouse when it got this detection, right. even though we had mouse control on. Because the detection is so bad, we actually have an air condition that says, if the detection is bad, don't do anything. Nope. We also, if in case you have uh, a bad condition where it's still OK, like it's just giving a small corner of the screen, it's giving you a bad air, uh -huh. we actually have a disable command in there, control K. You hit that, and it just disables the mouse control right there. So you don't, it stops it, so you can go back and reset the filter. The thing we would probably do differently is um, the the difficulty with the detect with the corners, the perspective filtering. We had to come up with a method to do that. 
And unfortunately, all the resources we could find, the methods that they gave us were very convoluted and not very well explained, at least in a way that we really understood. Because this is something that a lot of CV people get into, you know, computer vision, but we didn't have a lot of access to this sort of knowledge beforehand, so when we came up with it, we basically had to scramble around to find something that we could understand and implement. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we came up with something that isn't really done in practice, but does it work. It works, it works, okay. So, we stuck with it. We were able to get some help from a professor at the, the math department. He spent, we, we went there a few times, and he spent at least uh, like six hours helping us out. Oh, I would say that the thing that we learned the most is that when you come up with your plan of what you need to do, go through that list and find the things that you don't already know how to do, and talk to somebody about them first. Because when we did the, and when we did the perspective altering, we decided we were going to wait until we had other things in place because you can't really just implement perspective filtering and then expect, you know, just expect to test it because we need to have a lot of backup software beforehand. Mm -hmm. And we put that off, but when it came down to time to do it, it actually became a lot more complicated. And if we had started a bit earlier with the programming, with the method, we probably would have been in a better position.